But the ultimate person that I think bears responsibility is the president himself. Did he, in fact, know in June and April of this year, April and June, the consulate had been attacked? Did he know that in June it was attacked in such a fashion to blow a hole in the, uh, the outer wall where 40 people could penetrate uh, the compound? And if he didn't, that's almost impossible to imagine. Can you imagine the President of the United States going out to the public and Jonathan Carl ask him, what do you think about the attack on our consulate in Libya yesterday? And he says, I don't know what you're talking about. It's impossible that the White House did not tell him. So from my point of view, Jonathan, if he knew about these previous attacks, then I hold him responsible for leaving the consulate open and unsecured. There are three things he could have done. Close it, like everybody else did, the Red Cross and the British. Reinforce it heavily. And the third option is the worst. Leave it open and unsecured. So I want to get to the bottom of that. I want to know why the FBI felt it was a need to investigate a harassing email. What federal crime was involved? There's a lot of questions that can only be answered, I think, in a select committee forum where we can compare notes. Let me just put, just quickly, Ed. Um, the the Petraeus issue has obviously dominated the news, and I understand that. Four people died in Benghazi. Four people died. I don't believe that it was necessary for that to happen. And that's why there has to be a select committee. Now, Lindsay just went through a bunch of them. Why on September 11th, of all days, we didn't have assets available to go to Benghazi to rescue those people? What, what, what went on in this, quote, safe house? What, what is it that could have led anybody in their right mind to believe that this was a flash mob when there was no flash mob? There are so many questions. And as Lindsay said, we're not, it's not just the Armed Services Committee and the Intel Committee and the Foreign Relations Committee. This thing covers all of those areas. The American people deserve answers. And frankly, the families of these brave, brave Americans that were, were murdered d deserve answers as well. And they're not getting them. And finally, just one other thing. The President of the United States in the second debate said, I said it was a terrorist act on uh, when I was in the Rose Garden and chastised uh, Mitt Romney. We now know the facts are that he gave an interview right after that to 60 Minutes where he said we don't know. Which, which, which one? And for days afterwards, including to the United Nations, this was a hateful video that sparked a spontaneous demonstration. What did the president know? When did he know it? And what did he do about it? And that is, uh, uh, the American people deserve answers, just like they deserved answers with Watergate, just like they deserved answers with Iran-Contra, only this time there's four murdered Americans involved. And, and one final thought. I think this is a symptom of a greater problem. Al-Qaeda is not being diminished. If you had a Tunisian come to part of the uh, attack on the Benghazi consulate, if that's true, that means they're talking to each other. If you had three Egyptians involved, that means they're coordinating. And what I see in the Mideast is an explosion in the making, that our leading from behind model did not work, and one of the reasons they wanted it to be a riot and a mob spurned by video, there's less culpability. You know, we were over overwhelmed by an unpredictable event. If the truth is that you could see this coming for months, and al-Qaeda was gaining ground in Benghazi, and we didn't want to admit it, and the reason we said no to additional security requests because we wanted to normalize relationships with a non-existent government in Benghazi. That is a symptom of a greater problem. I was in Tripoli on July 7th on the election in Libya when they rejected Islamists, by the way. And Chris Stevens talked to me at length about the concerns he had, particularly in eastern Libya and in our consulate. And he, it's clear that the last message he sent back before he was murdered had to do with the, with the security situation in the consulate in Benghazi. We're all responsible for things we do. And, uh, and so... Uh, Did you raise this issue with the administration? Did you say, you know, I'm hearing concerns from the ambassador, this needs to be... No, because he said, I'm in constant communication with the administration. I did talk at length uh, during the whole after... Gaddafi fell uh, about to people like Panetta and uh, Hillary Clinton and others. I said, we've got to help these people. They, they have no border control. There's Al-Qaeda coming in. They, we need to give them, help them infrastructure. We need to help treat their wounded. Help the new Libyan government. Help the new Libyan government. We did practically nothing. Practically nothing when you look at it. In September, we went to Libya of last year, and coming back, we wrote an op-ed piece. We talked about that there is a mood in Libya that's very pro-American. 
they have some legitimate needs and they're willing to pay us for it. We need to help their wounded and they'll pay us for the cost. But the big takeaway is the militias are going to be the biggest issue for the Libyan people to deal with in terms of securing their future. And we recommended very strongly in the op-ed piece and in personal debriefings that you've got to get on this issue. You need to focus on forming a Libyan national army to replace the militias. Go through NATO, go through any organization you would like, but there's no substitute for our being involved. And I can tell you from the time we wrote the op-ed piece to the attack, we did virtually nothing in helping the Libyan people form a national army to deal with something that was growing uh, out of control, and that's the militias. Okay, let, let's talk about Ambassador Rice, because uh, you, you've both made it clear. Well, let me ask you, I mean, you, you think that, is she effectively disqualified from being Secretary of State? You, you would oppose her nomination? Yes. And we're talking filibuster, you do whatever you can to block it? Yes. I was on yes. Face the Nation. <laughs> I was, I was on Face the Nation, with the day, the day that the Sunday she went out, went on all of these shows. Okay, and right after that, I'm, uh, admittedly, it's a different network. You should than have been yours, on ABC, Senator. But, uh, yeah, right after that, while well, I'm waiting to come on, they have the president of the Libyan legislative body on right after her, and he said, "This is Al Qaeda. This is a terrorist attack. We know it. It is absolutely clear." And she obviously paid no attention whatsoever to that. The president of the Libyan National Assembly. Uh, it doesn't take a, 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 a general to tell you that people don't come to spontaneous demonstrations with mortars and rocket-propelled grenades. That is not a spontaneous act. That is a planned act. And anybody should have known it, and she should have known it. And again, the questions are being raised. Three days afterwards, apparently, after their initial uh, estimates, uh, that they were saying that it was a, the intelligence community was saying that it's a terrorist attack. I didn't need the intelligence community to tell me that it was a terrorist attack. And nobody who knows anything about warfare knows that it was not. And but, I said so at the time. But we've also had a very clear statement out of the Directorate of National Intelligence saying that this is exactly their assessment and that Ambassador Rice was saying precisely Five what... Five days afterwards, the, then we ought to question whether the Director of National Intelligence so, should keep his job. So isn't that the That's question? That's why we not need a select committee yeah. to find out who's responsible for telling the American people what were absolute falsehoods, including the President of the United States. 